Welcome to the Clinical Podcast Series brought to you by the American Academy of Optometry Foundation. Today's podcast is brought to you by the Clinical Glaucoma and Retinal Care Channel with multimodal imaging in pachycoroid spectrum. I'd like to thank our host and topical editor, Dr. Andrew Rickson, our topical expert, Dr. Jim Williamson. And now it's my pleasure to begin today's podcast. My name is Drew Rickson. I'm the topical editor for the glaucoma and retinal care section for the American Academy of Optometry Foundation podcasts. I'm also going to be the guest host tonight. We have Jim Williamson, who's our content expert, and he's going to be reviewing an article entitled Multimodal Imaging in the Pachychoroid Spectrum. Um, so, Jim, why don't you kind of talk to us about you know, choroid and pachychoroid specifically, because it's not necessarily a term that I think a lot of people are aware of. And so where did you start learning about pachychoroid? Why are you interested in it? And why do you think now is the time that we're starting to talk about pachycoroid. I became interested in, well, it wasn't called pachycoroid back then, but this was 1997 during my residency where I came across a patient that had this very characteristic leopard spotting uh, look to the retina. And, you know, back then, if you were going to look at, you know, what you suspected was the choroid, you didn't have many options. You know, you had a fluorescent angiogram, you had an ICG, endocyne and green angiography, and you had a B scan. I mean, you can't really delineate the core between the retina and the sclera and a B scan, but that's what we did. And I did some research on that patient and I came across a condition called uvular effusion syndrome. And that sort of started my interest in, in the core from, from that time on. And so it was interesting, I think it was back in 2013 when, you know, Packy cord was really termed and it started out for those of you who don't know, like you said, uh, Drew, that don't know about it. It's, it's a, it's a spectrum of diseases. It starts out with pachycoroid pigment epitheliopathy, central serous corneal retinopathy, pachycoroid neovasculopathy, and then polypoidal um, vasculopathy or aneurysmal type one. Mm-hmm. And then there's also focal cordal excavation in parapapillary pachycoroid syndrome. So those are those are some of the things that are associated in in the pachycoroid spin, uh, spectrum. Okay, so is that how have we developed more information? Is that like these things have always been around? We just didn't know about them. What's why now? Yeah, I think probably the biggest thing was the, obviously the advent of OCT, but even more so important was the uh, when Spade introduced us to enhanced depth imaging um, of the choroid. And I think that's probably one of the, the big things. And they started out in the article talking about OCT, but I think that's one of the big things for those of us using OCTs is that to look at the choroid, you do need to turn on that enhanced depth imaging feature or EDI of your machine in order to get a good look at the choroid. And that really that really changed the way we view things. You know, swept source folks out there, they don't have uh, that much issue. You're going to get deep down anyway, but using EDI, you'll be able to you'll be able to see what you need to see. And I think that that's what changed how we look at the choroid uh, in looking at this packet cohort spectrum that's come out. You know, I mean, honestly, you know, when we talk about EDI, you know, when I talk to people about EDI colleagues, a lot of people don't know what what it is. So we throw that term out there, but can you just do a quick synopsis on what EDI actually, how it's doing what it's doing? Like, how does it accomplish it? And what what is it actually accomplishing? Yeah, so Spade, way back when, uh, I think it was 2008, uh, noticed that if he inverted the image, kind of focused the machine inward and inverted the image, that he got a clearer view of the choroid and, you know, manufacturers, you know, such as, you know, Spectralis Heidelberg with our machine uh, found out about that and they, they changed their uh, software to the point where they would reinvert that image. And so by doing that mode, it sort of just refocuses that scan deeper versus it keeping it more on the retinal and vitro retinal interface there. Right. And it's very valuable for looking at the, uh, looking at the pachycoar spectrum. You think about, yeah, you know, the Sears detachments uh, that you see, you know, the outer retinal atrophy that you can determine, um, the thickness of the choroid, obviously, since it's pachycoroid, pachy means, uh, thick and choroid obviously is choroid. So you're looking at a thickness there so you can see where you're at and you're looking at pachy vessels, uh, those areas of focal cordal excavation. Those are very important to be able to assess using an OCT in the pachycoroid spectrum. You mentioned mode when you were describing EDI and the 
term used in the title here is multimodal. And that's also a term that I think gets thrown around a lot. So how do we use multimodal? What is multimodal? And then how do we use it in this pachycord spectrum? Because we covered EDI and that's just one portion of a multimodal. So just kind of work our way through that if you if you don't mind. Explaining. Yeah, so multimodal is just obviously using all the tools in your toolbox to um, be able to properly assess the condition that you're looking at. So, you know, we talked about OCT there and what we look for with that. You know, we switch over to OCTA. You know, OCTA is great at looking at uh, one part of the uh, pachycord, specifically pachycord neovasculopathy, when you get these what they call branching vascular networks. And OCTA has been shown to be very sensitive at picking those up. I think it's 95% versus 30% for fluorescing angiography. So there is a big, uh, a big advantage to using OCTA in the spectrum. You know, fluorescing angiography is still there. It's not going to go away, at least in my opinion. You know, we had a patient once that had chronic CSC and ended up just doing an FA because they weren't, uh, they weren't getting any better and it showed a little micro rip, which we didn't see on the OCT. So I think that there's value for the um, floor angiogram still. You know, ICG, if you want to look a little bit deeper, ICG stays in that choroidal uh, area longer and you get a better look at the choroid. And by doing ICGs, you can see these areas of flow voids ab above these pachy vessels. You can see the hyperpermeability, which is part of the pachy choroid phenotype, the compression of the choroidal capillaris and then the subsequent damage. So those are all part of your multimodal uh, tools that you can use in order to assess the pachycohort spectrum. Is there anything out there right now that's integrating these various tools so your analysis can be a little bit more streamlined? Is that is that something you see as a limitation? Was that mentioned in the article? Uh, any thoughts on, on that? Because obviously in, in busy clinical practice, we want to be able to look at things and make pretty snapshot analysis uh, so was that covered or is that something that you think is projecting, you know, going forward? No, that wasn't covered. That's a good point. You're looking at different things. I think for, for me having, you know, one machine that sort of does a lot of that, that does, um, you know, uh, for, or does OCT obviously does, you know, we didn't mention FAF, but FAF is also a bigger one to look at those gutterings, uh, the, the gravitational tracks of CSC disease. That's very good. Um, that does OCTA, they can do a fluorescent angiogram, do an ICG, all those sort of in one unit is, is obviously very helpful. Multispectral imaging, which is another part of multimodal, where you're looking at different spectral wavelengths, such as infrared or green reflectance or what have you, those are also important. So I think having a unit that does that is, is, is good, but you're correct. Other than that, you're sort of, you know, going from room to room to room, being able to get all the tests that you need in order to diagnose things appropriately. But the main thing, I guess, is just most of us probably have some of those tools, as you said, we just maybe need to start using them better. Would you say that that's accurate? Yeah, I think the biggest, biggest one, and I think I heard you mention it too once about EDI is just making sure you, you turn on the EDI on your machine to make sure you're, you're getting a good look at the core when you're suspecting the, anything in the packy forward spectrum. Great. Well, well, thanks for your time tonight, Jim. You know, really uh, very interesting article and it, it delves into, you know, pachycord spectrum. So there's kind of that recap and review aspect or, or initial learning. And then there's also just kind of the constant, you know, hey, we need to do better with what the tools uh, we have are. Uh, so great. So everybody check that out as well. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye. And a special thanks to CooperVision for their educational grant to make it all happen.